Hey guys, how are you? Vol here. Today I want to do a special analysis video where I'll be picking two different profiles in Affinity and comparing them to each other and talking about which I prefer in an army list and why. Uh, and perhaps I'll make it into a series of videos. Um, one thing I'm quite interested to hear from from you guys and that maybe in the comments section is uh, whether you also run into issues where there are two potential profiles for a role and you're not sure which to take and maybe you're interested in hearing my reasoning about that. Um, so if you do uh, watch this video and you enjoy it, again, just encouragement to let me know what you'd like me to talk about in the future because I think I, um, your input would be really, really useful. So to kick things off, um, episode today will be about these two models here. In fact, I'm going to minimize my face, my cam, we'll go up here. All right, so you can see Agent Cadmus Nash Shishkin. This is a Shazvasti character for the combined army. And in our other window, we've got an Umbra Samaritan. This is a, a newer model uh, also for the combined army, um, but uh, a bit more thematic for the Onyx contact sectorial. It sort of came out right around the, the time that the Onyx uh, sectorial in general came out. So um, what I'm going to be doing is talking about each of these two units and we're going to be going into uh, Army 6 here and deciding um, you know, what their strengths and weaknesses are and you know, for what purposes you would want to play them and, and comparing them and contrasting them with each other and deciding, well, which one's better ultimately. Um, and when we come to uh, any sort of conclusion, it won't be a consensus, I'm sure. Um, you'll be taking away some thoughts about what I think and what my reasoning is, but above all, you know, don't ever sort of think that there's one choice which is better just because Vol SC said so on the internet, just pay attention to the reasoning why that person says that thing and see whether it applies to you and whether you can learn from that. Alright, um, well first thing I want to say is that um, Shishkin has an older sculpt. She hasn't been resculpted in the same way that this guy is actually uh, a newer, more recent sculpt. So if we're just going purely off the models, I definitely prefer this guy. I put them together and he looks great. A uh, real joy to paint, whereas Shishkin probably could use resculpt. She's a little bit spindly and, and finicky, and when you look at her, you don't really imagine a sort of an alien Achilles in terms of strength and firepower. She doesn't even have a gun on her model. The spear is kind of cool. I like the spear, but that's really about it. So um, let's let's find out a bit more about these guys. This guy is the Umbra Samaritan, and uh, He's closely associated with a, an existing model, the Umbra Legate. They both have the Umbra sort of prefix in their title. Um, whereas uh, Shishkin is more of a Shasvasti character. She's sort of lumped in with the Shasvasti crowd and sort of like the character that represents that uh, sub-faction, that tribe. Um, we're going to be talking about the stats and so forth, but the very first thing I want to sort of point out about these guys is that they have a particular role in your Infinity Army, almost always. They are not a cheerleader. You don't leave these guys at the back of your army generating an order of return for your, your pool. They are too expensive for that. You can get your Ricadrons or your Imatrons or what have you to do that. They, um, they're they also not so much for supporting and healing and so forth um, and being specialists. Yes, it's true that the Umbra Samaritan can be an assault hacker and therefore a specialist. Uh, it is true that, uh, that Shishkin has decharges so she can go around and complete sabotage but that's not really the main focus of these models they're also not aro pieces you don't really sort of take your armor samaritan and put it behind some cover at the back line and just leave it there all game waiting for it to plap off shots with its it's maybe it's spitfire or something like that um there are other models that can do that i mean you have the the knock to fire with missile launcher amazing for that role um i think the overdrawn with the uh, heavy rocket launcher or plasma sniper can be pretty good because he can take so much punishment he's got an albedo um, maybe you like a TR bot for the aero uh, role. So, although obviously you can, you can actually make aeros with these pieces. That's not what they are for. These guys are dedicated Rambo's in my view. They are reasonably fast. They've got some tricks for getting around the table. They are close combat specialists, and they can take some decent, um, decently powerful weapons. So we're going to we're going to start by going into army 6 here and actually having a chat about what these guys have and I'm going to try and compare them because these models um, have some interesting similarities they both have access to some of the same things now I know that there are going to be some people watching this video and thinking well we're comparing apples to oranges they're completely different units and I use them in completely different ways for different reasons and that's fine um, I don't 100% agree with that I can I can say that 
there definitely there's an argument for that but um, when I think of these two models I think well they're both Rambos you wouldn't want to take both in the same list in my view because you'd only be spending your orders on one of them at a time and you're not really getting uh, effectiveness it'd be better to save your points on some other things like specialists and cheerleaders and, and what have you and just take one of these particular guys I, I would in 300 points in a normal ATS mission just wouldn't take Shishkin and a Samaritan I'm just gonna put it out there they don't synergize with each other really okay um, so first of all one reason why um, I compare these two units is that they both have close combat 24 so we've got the Samaritan here close combat 24 Shishkin close combat 24 and they both have Prothion now Prothion level 3 here on our friend Shishkin whereas the Samaritan Prothion level 4 so let's just very quickly learn about that and figure out what the difference is in fact I'm gonna bring up um, human sphere I should have done this before I started the video but that's all good so um, the main point and I'll just talk about it as I'm finding the specific rule and I guess you guys can do this on your desktop or wherever you're viewing this is that Prothion level 4 allows you to get plus one burst when you're attacking in close combat whereas um, Prothion level 3 really the best thing you can get out of that is to add plus three to your roll um, so adding plus three to your role is is probably more useful when you're fighting against other close combat specialists because it's more important to win the face-to-face -face role and get that crit whereas Prothion level four is uh, generally useful not just against other good uh, close combat combatants but uh, against um, like weaker units that you're trying to overpower so Prothion has a lot of really special rules here and I won't really go into detail about what it does because you guys can do that on your own but I think it's quite important to point out that I, I don't think any in the, anything in the game has Prothion level 5 yet not that I could see maybe I've missed something just let me know if I have um, but uh, Prothion level 3 and level 4 are distinct and, and on this one the Samaritan wins it's better to have Prothion level 4 and uh, let's just talk about that real quick Prothion level 4 means that you can first of all um, beat up cheaper troops probably more reliably but more importantly every time you inflict a wound with Prothion you gain a wound yourself so the Samaritan goes in and just with one short skill if he actually gets two hits through um, he suddenly goes from being a one wound character to having three wounds plus in WI whereas Shishkin can only inflict one wound at a time so he's gonna spend another order doing a coup de gras or, or whacking at it with another wound another for another wound so in that particular role once you get up close once you actually get to, to whacking people in the face the Samaritan really uh, takes the cake I may have got ahead of myself a little bit and I'll, I'll talk about this throughout my description but um, Shishkin's uh, around about the 50 points level you can take the Red Fury or the multi-rifle the Red Fury is 51 points whereas the Samaritan is in the 40s so Shishkin generally is about five six points more expensive um, it's true you can take a relatively cheap one with a breaker combi rifle for 40 points my um, my preferred profile is the Spitfire and I'll make my argument for that so 44 points with uh, versus 51 points there's a what's that a f seven point difference four plus seven yeah 51 uh, so they're relatively comparable on that but for the Samaritan you get a cheaper character and yet he's he's better at fulfilling the Prothion role in close combat actually sucking the the life out of people and being a vampire so I, I think that is actually a significant difference and we shouldn't take that one lightly I, I think that's that's actually quite important let's just pause here and, and we'll take into account the fact that some people say that infinity close combat isn't really significant it doesn't come much much it doesn't matter and to that I disagree now it might be that you are playing on tables that don't really allow much close combat or you're playing against opponents who uh, just prefer shooting all out or maybe the the the, the, the meta that you're in um, more people play certain factions maybe pano or something that don't really have much close combat but let me tell you um, I can't imagine your tables being so much different from the tables that I play on that close combat wouldn't be a, a thing the, the powerful thing about close combat is that we're playing infinity a game with with a lot of variance in it and if you are a, a good and competent player you are wanting to be looking for opportunities to reduce the variance and make sure that your plays yield the maximum expected value so um, when you're just attacking them with a Spitfire there's a few things that can go wrong you might lose the face-to-face -face roll or they might pass their armor saves and just go guts prone ducking around cover and and that's a bit very bad outcome whereas close combat the, the chances are much higher you've got a much much larger margin uh, for actually 
successfully confirming the kill there and actually swinging the odds of the remaining game in your favor. Um, also, you can take into account little tricks like um, pulling up to a point of cover, forcing them to waste their air roll on a change face, and then move into close combat to get around things like suppression fire. So maybe if you don't know tricks like that, maybe you're not seeing the most out of close combat. It's also a wonderful way to t tie up an ARO piece or beat something significant like a tag. So close combat I think is a really really big deal and uh, that's why I do value these two units. Now the next thing I want to highlight uh, with these two particular profiles is the movement. So Umbra Samaritan has the initial movement of 6 and then 2, whereas the Shishkin 6-4. And this is a pretty, pretty big difference in my view. A lot of the time you're just going to be moving 6 inches around the battlefield and shooting if your role as a Rambo is to use your gun more often. Uh, with close combat, again, pull around a corner with 6 inches and then attack doesn't really make too much difference. But with Shishkin having the extra um, 2 two inches worth of speed means that when you're getting into position when you're walking around the battlefield um, you have that distinct advantage of actually having more orders to shoot at them with an attack than within close combat later on I think that can be quite uh, quite significant too also if you are using that aforementioned trick where you move up to cover total cover you force them to waste the error on the change face and then you skip around the corner shish can do that with four inches whereas the umbra honey has that that very meager two inches so that is an area in which uh, Shishkin is markedly better and it is significant I actually think that's quite a big deal so um, before we sort of go into more of the fine-tuning of their abilities and there are some distinct differences there let's talk about one of the the most glaring differences and that is the fact that Shishkin as a fighter overall um, is better at ranged combat um, and it's it's quite quite a huge contrast here we're comparing blister skill 12 from the Samaritan with 15 for Shishkin and that is that's a massive three point difference that's that's the difference between being in a zero range band or a plus three range band or being up against cover or not being up uh, 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 um, having cover and I know you guys play enough infinity to appreciate the drastic difference that has I mean if you if you compare say um, Achilles to an Oniwaban I mean they're both negative six to shoot at and so forth and they're both comparably good in close combat the Oniwaban's a little bit better at close combat because he's got marker state for surprise attack and he's got superior infiltration but the reason why Achilles costs like twice as much is that Achilles um, has effectively three wounds Oniwaban has one and he's got the armor but also because of the fact that Achilles has like blister skill 15 and a spitfire that is a massive deal and most of what you're doing in affinity is shooting you're not in close combat, you know, more than half the time. Close combat, although it's niche, and though it's important, as I said before, it's not what you're doing most of the time. So Shishkin really wins out on that, and that's generally why we are going to consider her to be the better character. And I'm just going to lay my cards on the table and say, hey, this video, at the end of it, I'm going to be favoring Shishkin. That's cool. You guys might like the Umbra Samaritan more, but let's give her more of a chance, because there are some situations where the Samaritan is better. We've covered one of them, which is the close combat sort of thing. He's better at being in close combat, getting up to three wounds, and providing a target that your opponent has to come after and actually get rid of. And when they have to cut through effectively four wounds, that's not particularly easy. So uh, there is that. But let's expand on the blister skill 15 versus blister skill 12 a little bit more one interesting thing about shishkin is that for her to take the red fury profile it's a red fury not a spitfire so that has shock um, now that's a blessing and a curse at the same time it's a curse in the sense that you sometimes want to leave models unconscious so you can go and actually you know reeve their souls to actually gain wounds from them with prothion but other times you don't what if you're up against like somebody else's shishkin or somebody else's samaritan or their diva or um you know whatever else has no wound incapacitation well you definitely want the red fury in that case like that is just so crucial the the power of shock is is just it's just, i mean let's say you're up against a line of kuang shi for example or gazi motiwa red fury hands down beats the spitfire because uh, shock being so crucial you don't want to inflict one wound for them them to be standing and then to sort of carry on and they manage to survive and get behind you or uh, hit you with chain rifles or so forth also you don't want to hit their nist sniper only for it to be healed by a, a pal bot the next turn 
So the Red Fury, again, makes Shishkin markedly better at shooting overall. Um, and then let's move on to the nano screen. So the Samaritan, let's point out Blister Skill 12, um, unlike the Umbra Legate, who does have mimetism, the Samaritan doesn't actually have that uh, advantage. So with Shishkin, um, you're moving around, around the battlefield six inches at a time as well, but you don't have to hug cover. You don't have to, you have to sort of restrict your movement by just carefully moving up to cover and then shooting. Shishkin just can continue using the full benefit of her movement every single time and they are still having to apply the cover penalty to their face-to-face -face roll. So uh, that makes Shishkin more effective at about uh, coming around the flank, actually finding angles to troopers and just uh, really crushing them. I think that's really, really super important. Okay, uh, what should we have a look at next? So I think it's about time to talk about the big one and that's the this the most striking difference between these two uh, in terms of their abilities and that is the the old super jump so um the umbra samaritan has super jump whereas shishkin doesn't and let's talk about sh uh, super jump because this might get a bit controversial um i'm going to come out and say that super jump is a fairly situational ability i will grant you guys i will i will agree that it's a powerful ability and if you know what you're doing with it um it can win games it can be very effective um is it so effective that we're going to put the umbra samaritan on par with shishkin uh taking into account the relative points difference of course the six the six or seven points there so let's talk about that super jump means that he could jump six inches in any direction making pie slicing and if you don't know what pie slicing is looking up in the forums it's quite uh, controversial but uh, it makes pie slicing slicing even more obnoxious and controversial than it already was um so it allows you to effectively declare if you want to that say i'm going to uh, jump three and a quarter inches in this diagonal direction just so that i can see that fusilier over there who's probably your lieutenant standing on top of a building which is you know you guys know what the normal sort of corvus belly sort of um, you know paper buildings look like and then the samaritan shoots it whereas shishkin might not have been able to achieve that shishkin might have actually had to come right up to the building climb the ladder get over use something close range like the pulsar or close combat to do that so the samaritan might have actually got away with some kills that, that shishkin couldn't and that i think is is one reason why you might want to take the samaritan instead of shishkin that's not normally my recommendation but i can certainly see the argument for that if you are playing a lot of games on terrain in your meta where you know what sort of table you're going to be playing on and you know that your opponents like to put things on buildings in positions where super jump would allow you to reach those things and kill cheerleaders well i guess you can't beat the samaritan in that case he's going to be able to really abuse super jump and do that you can also combine the two movement skills the six and the two to get eight inches in a complete jump jumping on top of a, of a ledge and then coming around so um i think that that's going to be evident um i'm not too sure if i guys if, if i did uh, i think i did i'll see if i actually have the um the photos again no i don't think i can um did i do a, a video recently on um the samaritan i think gosh here i am on my own channel and i can't even remember if i recently covered that that game just gonna go check it out now excuse me no it doesn't look like uploaded that game so um what happened is that i played a game recently uh with a samaritan and uh the samaritan's basically like jumping up on top of um basically jump jumping up on top of of the bandua terrain buildings so um i'm not too sure if i can find where that um that that list of, of pictures is maybe i didn't actually capture it that'd be a shame if i didn't grab it uh I guess we're gonna have to yeah I guess we're gonna have to give that one a miss um, I think I've got one photo here of, the, of my Samaritan and that's what my Samaritan looks like painted but I never actually took photos of him going around and wrecking people oh well that's a shame um, anyway point being is that uh, as a Rambo he can get into some spots the that the Shishkin can't um, and I think maybe that's where I'll leave it um, super jump again situational you may be playing on terrain where um, Shishkin's just got more than enough opportunities to do the job or maybe the terrain is just so high that, Shish that the super jump can't even get you up there anyway 
So um, this is this one's always going to be a little bit subjective, but I think what I'm trying to say is that in the majority of cases, in the the large variety of scenarios, if you identify that specific moment in the game and you say, would I be better off with a Samaritan or Shishkin? More often, like above 50% of the time, you're going to be saying, yes, I wish I'd paid that extra seven points to get Shishkin. Let's continue into the into the into the kit. So I'm a Samaritan, I'm a two Shishkin. Armor 1, okay, but Shishkin does have a nano screen, so she's going to benefit from that armor bonus a little bit more often. BTS 3 for Shishkin, um, Umbra Samaritan BTS 3, very comparable, like I've been saying so far. Uh, Umbra Samaritan, you can take two of them, whereas Shishkin is a character, only one of them. Uh, I don't think that's going to come up an awful lot. I don't think you'd be taking double Samaritans, unless of course you want to make a Harris team of them, which I would strongly recommend that you don't. Um, so Shishkin has kinematic level 2. Samaritan also has kinematic level 2. Uh, Samaritan has hyperdynamics level 1 though and Shishkin doesn't. So what do we make of this? Um, hyperdynamic... <coughs> Excuse me, bit of a sneeze there. Hyperdynamics gives you plus 3 to dodging but also to engage as well. So I find that significant. If your Samaritan has just eaten up a whole bunch of models, he's on three wounds with NWI, and they're coming around the corner to try and eliminate him with a flamethrower or just with mass shooting, and his only option is to dodge, well he has a better chance of surviving than Shishkin does on the face of it when you just look at the rule, but let's go back to it. Samaritan physical 12, Shishkin physical 15. So uh, Shishkin's already dodging at the same amount and, and engaging at the same amount as Samaritan. So the Samaritan doesn't actually have an edge with that rule. It only takes him up to par. Um, and then when you factor in phys physical 15, Shishkin, when she's attacking in close combat, is attacking at physical 15, whereas the Samaritan's still attacking at uh, physical 12. Now, um, on that note though, Shishkin, if she is actually hiding in the enemy deployment zone at the end of spending a whole lot of orders and there's still got some guys left to come after her, again, they're going to come round on an angle where the uh, Samaritan's not going to have cover, whereas Shishkin will have cover because she's got a nano screen. So that does make a big a difference. Shishkin has Shazvasti, obviously, was, was Samaritan doesn't. I'm not going to put a lot of stock in this. I'm not going to say, hey guys, Shishkin has, you know, got the big edge because she's got Shazvasti. This is one of the most each situational and marginal rules in the game. It does not come up a lot. Um, a decent opponent, if he or she sees that Shazvasti is going to make a difference, they'll probably just come over and coup de gras and get rid of your model. So that's quite a big deal. Um, she gained free agent after the most recent expansion. This guy doesn't have free agent. Again, free agent, also another situational rule. It's not going to come up a whole lot. If you wanted to, you could start her in group two, move her to group one, or move her back from group one to group two, but I just don't think that's going to be happening very much because as a Rambo, she's going to be wanting as many orders as she can in group one, and very rarely are you going to swap her to group two. Um, possibly if you start her with, say, five orders in group two, ran out of command tokens, and group one just got you know, deteriorated right down to three or four orders. Maybe you want to s send her over to group two in the last turn to get more work done, but that's just not really a biggie. Then Prathion level three, no wound incapacitation, incapacitation, we already talked about. Okay, so I'm rambling a bit. Now let's talk about the fact that the Samaritan um, has a bit of a distinct option within the sectorial. And I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I am going to commentate because some people like to take the special fire team where he can go with the Rodox or he can go with the Zero Dawn back droids. So maybe you like the Rodox and, and really this video isn't about comparing vanilla to Onyx. I can do that in a different video if you guys want. But, um, you know, I'm not a huge fan of the Rodox, as you guys know, and I'm certainly not a big fan of the Zeodron Batroids. Um, if your only reason to buy the Samaritan is to make these, these little link teams, that's cool, go ahead. Um, what I was most interested in really is in the context of uh, Vanilla Combined, not so much as Fasty Sectorial, where you can only take Shishkin or, say, um, Onyx where you can only take the Samaritan, uh, your choice is already made for you really. But um, while we're on the topic of the Samaritan, and I'm probably not going to talk about him again for a while, I will just say something about the Zeodron Batroids team. Let's say that you want to have a Harris Link team that includes a specialist and tags. So you take the Samaritan which has the Assault Hacker, and you go over to our good old Zeodron Batroids, and you take maybe a Red Fury and a Multi-Rifle. 
Cool, you've just spent 160 points. Yes, you're getting three orders for that, but you've spent 160 points. The thing about these guys is, yes, they all have access to super jumps, so they can all jump at the same time. Um, you've got four four guys and a six two guys, so they're crossing eight inches of space a turn. Um, but look, when it comes to just massive firepower, if you're just trying to rip into some enemy ARO link team or something like that, you could go ahead and just spend it on a overdrawn with HRMC. Or you could take your own link team, maybe with a lot of firepower. If you've really budgeted 160 points as this massive block, one thing you could do is go, oh cool, I'll just take a Sphinx for 106 points, and maybe I'll take, say, a Malignos Ford Observer for 36 points. You you still haven't even spent, you know, as many points as you did with that Harris. And maybe we can just uh, grab an Ikadron here, and for this expenditure of 150 points, we still have three models, we still have three orders, but are we completing objectives more effectively with our specialist? Yes, we are, because we've got a Malignos who has infiltration, who actually has marker state, can actually go up to that objective. Are we getting across the battle quicker? Yes, we are. Uh, the Sphinx is movement 6-6 six, six with climbing plus, so it's going to be quicker than the Harris Link team was. Is it uh, better at shooting? Well, potentially, because Bliss is skill 14 um, with four dice for the Spitfire. Um, I would prefer that to, say, the, the Zeodron or the Samaritan at shooting, even though they've got an extra dice, because the Shazvasti Sphinx, he's got Tio Camo, he's got Marker State. So um, I think that if you're playing, if you're playing seriously uh, contact, um, the Onyx Contact Force, go for a setup like this, get yourself a Sphinx. Um, yes, the, these models look cool, so if, if that's your only reason for getting them, sure, I can I can totally attest to that. But if you uh, if you're taking them because you're thinking you're going to be winning more games at ITS tournaments in in general, I I doubt that. I just don't think that you'd be doing that as frequently with these models. Hey, there are some people that do well in ITS tournaments, and maybe some people who like these models too. I don't want to be uh, saying that I'm an authority on that, but I just guys I just wanted you guys to know what I what I thought and how I felt about that because um, taking three tanks, three tags might seem good, but uh, from my view, you're really just tripling the cost of a unit that already is a bit questionable. Other thing is that as soon as you come within range of an enemy hacker, well, you know, that's a problem. All three of the models in your Harris Link team are hackable. The Sphinx has a chance of avoiding that because he has Marcus State, so he can at least get around that in one way or another. So that is something. So where do we stand then uh, to finish up? with the other guys. So we'll go back to the Samaritan. I think I have a few things left to say. There's a reason why I prefer the Spitfire profile over the Break Economy and the Plasma Carbine um, Assault Hacker. I also don't like him as a lieutenant because, um, you know, unless you're taking a lot of Morats, maybe in, you know, a Morat heavy sort of list, losing your lieutenant as a Rambo is not really a great idea because you're expecting him to die. Um, the reason I like the Spitfire over the Breaker Combi Rifle is that um, if you're going to be investing so many orders into that model, having plus one damage and an extra dice uh, makes too much of a difference to pass down. If you're already within eight inches of them and, you know, the breaker combi rifle will be better, well, chances are you're attacking something which is going to be killed anyway by the four dice. So overall, the Spitfire is my pick. Uh, the Samaritan has a flash pulse, and good old Shishkin doesn't. Let's talk about that for a minute. So the Flash Pulse can be a good ARO from the Samaritan because your willpower 14. If you're firing at something which is attacking you from 20, 20 inches away and you're reacting, then Bliss Skill 12 versus willpower 14, you've got that Flash Pulse there as a backup. But again, if you're being attacked from that range in the other player's turn, you're probably going to die either way. So having a Flash Pulse doesn't suddenly redeem our Samaritan here. It doesn't really help that much. Shishkin, okay, doesn't have a Flash Pulse. What does she have? She's got a Pulsar and decharges. Samaritan doesn't have a direct template weapon. Now, with Shishkin's Pulsar, that actually is kind of cool, because, uh, again, if she's fending off enemy troops, let's say she's eaten a bunch of bodies, bodies she's wounds three, NWI in play, um, having that Shishkin, that, that, that Pulsar really punishes them from coming around and, 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 and attacking her, especially if they're a glass cannon type of unit, like something with uh, Tio Camo and maybe an assault pistol or something, um, or, or, or some sort of quick way of attacking you, the Pulsar can really sort of limit the number of orders they can spend uh, trying to kind of take out your, your wounds total. The Samaritan can't really achieve that same thing. Um, let's talk about the D-charges now. 
one thing that really annoys me about the D charges is that it gives you a penalty if you try to use them in close combat. So if you are attacking a Yotam or uh, something else like um, a Seraph, for example, you don't want to lose the face-to-face -face roll. That's disastrous. So you kind of want to go uh, close combat 24 plus Prothion level 3 for close combat 27, which gives you a very, very high chance of winning the close combat. And not only that, but, but critting as well. The D charges means that if you win the close combat, it's three dice rolls uh, for armor um, at half armor. If I remember the rule correctly, I might be wrong on that that half armor part. But you just don't you just don't want to risk losing that. One thing that might happen is that you win the face face um, roll and um, the other guy passes one or even two of the armor saves. Whereas with uh, using Prothion, it means that you might just get a crit and do one wound anyway. So if you've got enough orders, you're going to kill that tag just by critting so often. So um, D charges doesn't really make a Shishkin better at close combat. For me, the D charges really is only there for completing sabotage. I don't really see a lot of cases where I would actually get that mileage out of it in close combat. Another important thing though is that it is anti-material, so on a, on a mission like Nimbus Zone or Supremacy, it does give her an edge there where she can actually destroy um, a console that your opponent might have taken, whereas the Samaritan can't quite do that. Although, if you take the assault hacking version of him, um, he can at least capture it. Again, let me just say, uh, with assault hacking device, yeah it's cool. I mean, it's cool on a guy like this, but you're going to be wanting to focus your orders on killing them, not on trying to hack them so much, and bringing an assault hacker on a unit like this makes them too vulnerable against killer hackers. Remember, if you get killer hacked by a ninja killer hacker who's going to use a shock program on you, your end of WI is not going to help, and you'll just wish like crazy you didn't take the Samaritan. That's just super important to remember. Uh, now, going to the close combat weapons in particular, Shishkin has double action close combat weapon, whereas the Samaritan has a Vorpal close combat weapon. And uh, let me tell you, Prothion is a little bit annoying in its limitation, that it says that if you're going to use Prothion, you can't also use your close combat weapon. So you can't Prothion with your close combat weapon, Vorpal, or double, w, double action. So when Shishkin's attacking, she's actually never going to use a double action uh, close combat weapon, except for some rare cases where maybe she's attacking something um, that is going to be immune to the, the Prothion effects, like maybe a tag. But even then, she's going to want the plus three to close combat. So I think even then you still won't use the double action close combat weapon. The Samaritan, on the other hand, if you get into close combat with that, that Yotam or that Guizhou or something with massive armor like that Avatar, and you've only got one order left, are you going to use Prothion? I don't think you will if the tag's got full wounds. I think you're going to make a gamble for it and you're going to go Vorpal close combat weapon and have that um, you know, very high chance of getting a crit with it or at least winning and forcing the armor save to beat a 12 with the Vorpal. So um, I like the Samaritan's kit for close combat better than Shishkin's close combat kit for that one. She's got a pistol, Samaritan does as well. I think we're tied up on that one. Woof, okay. Um, lastly, the multi-rifle. I think I'll just mention that real quick. Um, a breaker combo rifle. I think I've already said why I prefer the Red Fury. If you're going to be a Rambo, you want more dice in your gun, and it's very easy to get into the right range bands for the Red Fury. Um, I might have missed a few things with these guys, but um, I'm quite keen to think hear about what you think. Um, do you do you take the Samaritan more? Do you like it better? Uh, what do you think of Shishkin? Let me know, guys. Um, if you are going to post on the video, though, one thing I'm most interested to hear is that if I do more videos like this where I take two units and you're wondering, oh, I play Nomads or I play Pano, and there are these two guys for the specific role, whether it's a Tag or whether it's a Specialist or a Rambo, let me know if you would like me to commentate on you know the difference between two, pri two, two profiles where you haven't really done a lot of analysis and you're not sure which way to go and which you think would be more effective and if you'd like my thoughts because I'd be interested in um, and just stepping up to the bat on that one but I think I'll leave it there thanks for watching guys as usual